The first area has to do with the very beginning. Just like building a house, you need a firm foundation upon which to start your assay. And that means the cell and tissue preparation at the very beginning. You know, how you culture the cells, how you fix and perm. So let's talk about those. First off, you want healthy cells. You know, never underestimate the value of the cells that you're imaging at the very beginning, right? So it, let's say you're culturing cells. You want to take a look at those on a transmitted light microscope to make sure that uh, they have the right morphology, that there's no contamination, that their confluency is good. For many assays, you want perhaps a 30 to 60% confluency on a cover slip. Uh, if you're using tissue, you want to make sure the tissue morphology is good. And so you have to have proper media, serum, the nutrients, good temperature and CO2 conditions. Here at Thermo Fisher Scientific, for instance, we have our GIPCO cell culture side of the company, which sells a lot of these tools that you need, like media. So when you first begin, Make sure that your cells, are at, at least your control cells, are as close as possible to, to their native physiology and metabolic state. So proper culturing conditions. And prior to beginning your assay, here's a list of some things to really consider. You know, examine your cells. Make sure that the pH indicator is not discolored. Phenol red is most common and it will have a, um, a pinkish color. If the pH starts to go off, you'll see that it turns yellowish. Are the cells of the proper confluency or the proper cell number for your assay? Some assays require that the cells are totally confluent and have um, uh, contact inhibition going on. Are, the, are there any signs of bacteria or fungi? Do you have any strange floaties floating around in your cells uh, to indicate that there might be some contamination? Do the cells have proper morphology? Are they shrunken? Are they, do they have weird extended processes? Or are they how they're supposed to look? Are they blubbing? I'll show you an example of that. And are the cells well adhered to the substrate, if you were talking about cultured cells? Or for tissue, like if tissue sections, make sure they're well adhered to the slide. If they're not, they can come off, and that can cause artifacts. Also consider the, uh, you know, the basis of your assay. Do you need cells in culture? Maybe you want to go to what is increasingly popular, a three-dimensional model. Up here in the upper right, you can see some images of spheroids, for instance, or using our algae matrix to make a true three-dimensional structure that's interconnected. And these are all considerations to think of before you begin your assay or right at the beginning of your Im imaging protocol. Here's some examples of some cells that aren't really in the best state to start with. In the upper left, for instance, you can see a couple of cells labeled with two fluorescent dyes. And the cell at the top is unhealthy. You can see what's called cell blebbing, where the plasma membrane actually extrudes out into the media. A good sign that cell's unhealthy or maybe has the wrong osmolarity. In the upper right are some cells that are probably going through apoptosis. They don't like the medium it's in. Uh, they're starting to shrink, and, they, and you see these weird processes around the outside. And the cell on the left in that picture actually has nuclear fragmentation happening. Uh, this is a green nuclear dye called Cyto-13. And then at the bottom, you can see an example of some fairly confluent cells that are lifting off the cover slip that they were supposed to be adhered to. Um, this causes some distortions that you see because you can't really focus on the cells that are not well adhered in the same focal plane as the others. So for some cell types, you need polyllylysine or some other substrate treatment in order to allow good attachment. Healthy cells definitely make for healthy data, so have a good beginning to your process.